video of tonight for opening night of Fright Fest 2017. We've made our way up to the top of the hill here to Willoughby's Zone Resurrected and always an absolute favorite scare actor here, Little Innocents playing the, I believe I understand the mythology correct, the dead daughter from Willoughby's She's so smooth, such great makeup on top of that. I could just watch her work all night and just freak people out. All right, well, we could watch her all night, but we're gonna, or maybe we weren't. All right, we are going to keep moving on. All right, next up on our tour of Fright Fest, we are going to be heading to Willoughby's Resurrected. This has been a favorite maze of mine the last couple years because it is just, to me, pure kind of classic haunted house Halloween. Uh, maybe not quite something like Trick or Treat at Knott's with the... Uh, you know, jack-o'-lanterns and all of that type of stuff, but it just, it feels to me classic kind of monster. It's got a couple good little gags in it, and uh, just all the way around, a lot of fun. So, let's make our way in.
All right, I know that's really dark in there to see, and you can obviously get higher quality videos elsewhere for sure, but uh, hopefully you enjoyed a little bit of what you can feel from that. Some great actors in there, just great sets. Just really, really, really enjoy that one. Just classic, classic kind of Halloween, so. All right, we're gonna keep on the move. All right, so this is unfortunate, but we are here at Dead End, which is their new maze. We've heard it's basically got a lot of blackout elements uh, and uses a little bit of Gantam technology in there with the failing uh, flashlights and stuff, but it is seriously backed up. The express line, front of line that media is using and just anybody that bought the front of line is looped, doubled over, and then it's being fed into the regular line which goes all the way down there. So I guess we're gonna skip it. It feels really weird to be skipping their brand new maze. It's their only new maze this year, but uh, not sure that we're ready to allocate I don't know, an hour or so into the express line or whatever it's not even being. We've heard from other people that have done it tonight in express it's been taking them at least 40 minutes or so. So uh, yeah, not sure that we can really afford that time when we're trying to cover the whole event. So uh, let us know if you check out Dead End, let us know in the comments what you think of it. Maybe uh, people can help feeding in the info there. I don't think there's gonna be a ton of video on it with it being a primarily a blackout maze. But uh, yeah, unfortunately we're gonna see it. I don't know if we'll be able to get back out here this season, but I would like to try and I would definitely like to uh, check it out. So uh, that said, we are gonna start making our way down the hill and out of this Willoughby section of the park. All right, we've made our way down the hill now to the uh, trifecta down here. We've got Vault 666 across the way, Toys on the other side there, and then Red's Revenge. These are mazes that have not been updated in quite some time, at least to our knowledge. Uh, same theme, at least. I haven't heard anything different, so. Uh, but I had fun with them, especially Vault 666. I've liked quite a bit. So that said, though, let's make our way into Red's Revenge. There's such a funny facade, like it just feels like it's at like a carnival or something type of a haunt. But uh, I like the kind of quirkiness and silliness of it. A long time ago, in a small village, with a girl who went by the name of Red White. After asking many people from the village to help her go to a sick grandmother's cottage, no one was here. She was forced to take a treacherous journey by herself over the hill.
there is a lot of space to move in here. A lot of ground for the actors to kind of hide away and do their thing, which is pretty cool. Uh, sometimes that claustrophobic feel is the way to go, and sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of movement. Uh, mobility, I mean, with a lot of larger pieces. Closing scene. Or I should say near closing scene. It's kind of a fun fun way to close things out. So again, nothing really changed there, pretty much the same as Patters Pass, but uh, fun little quirky maze. If you followed our stuff before, you know I'm really into quirky. Alright, on to the next one. And I would love to make you one of Now you belong to me. <laughs> Alright, so we are in, in with the toys. Terrible toys. And this is a 3D house. Toys of Terror 3D. So, uh, it translates well though without the 3D. I don't think I've worn the glasses in several years here or really in any of these. So, so it's fun stuff. All the crazy colors. Even though I'm not really a fan of wearing the 3D glasses or that idea of the 3D, I love that there's a lot of color in 3D mazes. Obviously, there's got to be. So you get all these crazy look colors. Too. fun always silly I kind of don't want that one ever to change even though I'm talking about needs for refresh there <laughs> fun stuff toys of terror 3d alrighty our last stop for this video and for this night is vault 666 uh, this is one of like quite a bit the last few years. It's got a pretty neat little pre-show, although it does slow things down quite a bit. You can see the massive line here. It's one of the things to know. Uh, all three of the houses down in this sector uh, have pre-shows that slow things down a lot and really give problems with capacity throughput and all that. So uh, if you're coming out, it's very common for a lot of people to kind of storm here first. And most people are storming here first because it's just they're the closest mazes and they don't really think about the rest of them. But in this case, it's actually the real most uh, important strategy is to come straight here and do these houses first. Uh, then as you make your way up the hill uh, to some of the other spots, whether it's Chupacabra or the rest, they don't have that same sort of pre-show uh, grind there. Um, so really helps with the I'm sorry, helps with your uh, planning for the night to kind of get these done first. I think I would do these first and then head straight to dead end 
up the hill uh, if I were coming back here on my own one night. So that said, let's make our way into Vault 666. Step right in, top of the yellow line, go ahead all empty spaces. That was our last pace oh of the night. I've had a great time at the park. I mean, definitely need some refreshing in some spots. Would like to maybe see one or two maze changes for next year. Um, yeah, definitely have more thoughts, and we'll share those all on our podcast dedicated to Six Flags Magic Mountain Fright Fest 2017 coming up here. As this uh, video goes live, it should be just a couple days after, so if you are interested in that, find us on iTunes and Stitcher where we'll talk all things Six Flags, and uh, or I should say Six Flags Fright Fest, as I said, 2017. So, with that being said, it is late at night, probably, I think we're about a half hour left in the event, maybe an hour left in the event, so we're just going to relax a little bit now. I think we're done with the work part, so going to enjoy. Until next time, we'll see you in line somewhere.